Hello friends, I am Dr. Kuldeep Mohadikar. In this video, I will present my fourth chapter from my series, Chapters from the History of English Literature. In this chapter, I will be presenting uh, university wits. Who are the university wits? So Shakespeare's immediate predecessors are known as university wits. They are John Lilly, Robert Greene, George Pill, Thomas Lodge, Nash, Thomas Keir, and Christopher Marlowe. They are known as university wits because they had graduated at Oxford and Cambridge. These young graduates had no passion to sponsor their literary activity and no desire to enter the church. They turned to playwriting to make a living. They were ambitious and opportunistic and often lived a reckless bohemian life. But they were professional men of letters and founded the Elizabethan School of Drama and paved the way for Shakespeare. The condition of drama before the university weeds was precarious and chaotic. The classicist had form but no fire. The popular dramatist had interest but little sense of form. Thus, the drama was struggling between the well-formed chill and structureless enthusiasm. The group of the university weeds was able to unite the classical conception of the drama and enthusiasm of the popular wits. The university wits mostly work as a group and each contributed to the evolution of drama to the point where Shakespeare was to take it up. Their plays had some characteristics in common. They are, they dealt with heroic theme such as the lives of the great men like Alexander and Tamburlaine. Their treatment was heroic, uh, splendid descriptions, long speeches and violent emotions. Their style too was heroic, strong and sounding lines, grand epithet and powerful declamation. Their themes are mostly tragic with almost no humor. The first of the university beats that we are going to see is John Lilly. His uh, time period is from 1554 to 1606. Lilly as a dramatist is important as the first English writer of high comedy and as having used prose as the medium of its expression, his plays include The Woman in the Moon, Endymion, Medas, etc. The Woman in the Moon is Lilly's only play in blank verse. The rest is in prose. Their aristocratic lover, romantic atmosphere, witty dialogues, pleasant songs and humorous subplots anticipated Shakespearean comedy. Lilly is known for his romantic prose work, Euphues, that gave English language euphistic style. Then we will come to Robert Greene. His time period is between 15, 1558 to 92. Green wrote some fine plays. They are the comical history of Alfonso's King of Aragon, the looking glass for London and England, written jointly with Lodge, the history of Orlando Furioso, the Scottish history of James the Fourth. Green's important plays are the honourable history of Friar Bacon and Friar Bungay, Alfonso's the King of Aragon. Green is the first to delineate women in the first manner of Shakespeare. He is called Homer of Women. Green introduced a new type of comedy to which critics have given the name Romantic Comedy. Shakespeare's Twelfth Night and As You, La As you Like It owe much to this form. Then we come to the third university weed that is George Peel. His period is 1558 to 97. Among the plays of Peel, George Peel may be mentioned The Arrangement of Paris, that is, it is a pastoral play, The Old Wife's Tale, The Love of King David and Fair Bathsheba, The Famous Chronicle King Edward I, uh, uh, it's a chronicle history, The Battle of Alcazar, a romantic tragedy. His plays have variety and are talented, but he lacks skill in plot construction and delineation of uh, character. Then we come to 
Thomas Lodge and Thomas Nash. Thomas Lodge uh, time period is 1558, 1558 to 1625 and Lo Nash is 1567 to 1601. Lodge's dramatic works is small in quantity. His only surviving play is The Wounds of Civil War. The only surviving play of Nash is Summer's Last Will and Testament. It is a mask weak in both plot and character. Then we come to the most important university weeds that is Thomas Keir. His time period is 1558 to 1594. Much of dramatic work of Keir has been lost. Of his surviving plays, the Spanish tragedy is the most important. It is called the tragedy of blood, violence and revenge. Its horror involving murder, frenzy and death made the play most popular in its own time. Another surviving play of Kidd is Cornelia. His work shows an advance in the contribution of plot and development of character. Then we come to the last university beats and the most important and significant university beat that is Christopher Marlowe. Uh, his time period is 1564 and 1593. Marlowe is the central sun around whom all these minor stars of university beats revolve. He is the father of English tragedy. The glory of the Elizabethan drama dates from the publication of his Tamburlin in 1590. He wrote only four tragedies during a period of five years. They are besides Tamburlin, the Jew of Malta, Dr. Faustus and Edward II. Marlowe's greatest contribution to drama was that he raised the subject matter of drama to a high level. Marlowe's characterization is very simple. He used blank words in English drama in a very fine manner. His heroes are individuals. They, com they come from common people. They arouse sympathy in some degree and in their own nature are the seeds of their own fate. In this way, the university weeds developed English drama and which was helpful to the following generation. So friends, this was all from my side in today's chapter uh, on University Weeds from my series, Chapter from the History of English Literature. Hope you will like uh, this uh, chapter like you liked other chapters. So thank you friends.